Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds, and welcome to Ask the Cheese Man. Uh, this is episode 234. Uh, just let me know if the music's too loud and I'll just turn it down. The backing track, that is. Not my wonderful tones. Um, for those who don't know, I'm Gavin Webber and I'm the host of the show uh, and Chief Curd Nerd. And I'll be attempting to answer your cheese-making questions. So, that's a good start to the show. Uh, we'll say good day to a few people. We've got a few people in the chat today. Not as many as normal, but hey, some people forget. But anyway... Um, we will say good day to Shauna. Hello, Shauna. Uh, lovely to see you. Chris. Hello, Chris. Is this your first time live? Welcome to you. Um, Nicola. Good day, Nicola. Lovely to see you. Uh, Mochi Bun. I'll get to your question in a second, and it's a good one, too. Um, Michael and Jenny. Hello. How are you both over there in Adelaide? Lovely to see you. Uh, who else we got? Hey, Seven Apollo. How are you? Lovely to see you as always. Emily. Good day, Emily. And. Oh, okay. Got a question. All right, we'll get to that in a second. Um, first of all, uh, I finally finished making the uh, smoked paprika kefili cheese video. Uh, I finished editing and everything. I've just proof watched it to make sure it's okay. Later on tonight, I'll be uploading it and releasing it to members of a young tier and higher uh, and uh, patrons as well. So they'll get early access and I'll release it sometime tomorrow night. Um, and you'll get to see the smoked paprika kefili. And there is a picture of the of it, a uh, sneak peek in the gallery today. And the gallery will be at 30 minutes past the hour. And we've got some lovely pictures that Michael has sent in uh, with a question. So that'll be cool. Um, what else have we got? Oh, also smattered through the... Um, uh, through the show, there'll be some jokes, cheese jokes, more like dad jokes, but they have a cheese flavour to them, I suppose, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, big thanks to all the financial members, as always. Um, and on the screen, we've got all the YouTube members. Thank you, one and all, for your financial support. Uh, and of course, all of the patrons. Thank you to all the patrons who. Uh, support the show and thanks to all financial members past and present uh, okay so uh, there will be I will be throwing a gift membership into the chat sometime during the show as well so watch out for that one uh, you will have to accept uh, re to receive memberships I think that's how it works anyway there'll be a thing in there somewhere um, and uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. I hope to see who the first person that picks up the, the gift membership that I throw in there. Okay, um, also Mark has just joined. G'day Mark, lovely to see you. And so has Boaz. Uh, finally, I can see the live stream, indeed. So that's why we do the Wednesday night because uh, not everybody can see the Saturday morning version. Um, all of those in the uh, in West, South Australia, Western Australia could was too early for them. Uh, and subsequently, uh, Asia and Europe, it was all too early um, or too late, uh, wherever they may be. Uh, so that's why I did the second show on Wednesdays for uh, the other time zones other than uh, North America and early here in the uh, west coast of, uh, of Australia. Oh, sorry, west coast. The east coast. East coast. I'm on the east side. Whew. All right. Um, one thing I want to throw out there before I get to any of the questions is I've been looking at the merch store, um, which I finally, finally been able to change the uh, the URL of it. So the link is a lot easier. So as you can see, it's merch.cheeseman.tv. Pretty simple to remember. Um, I've managed to um, get all that set up and I'll just um, bring it up in the gallery, uh, on my gallery page. Hang on, just two seconds. Uh, will it work? 
Uh, two six. Can we show this? Of course we can show it. Um, there we go. So uh, there's the merch page there. So merch.cheeseman.tv. Um, and I was wondering uh, these t-shirt designs, not the books of course, but um, the t-shirt designs are getting a little stale as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I do love the Curd Nerd one. Um, and some of the other, well, I, I like them all because I designed them, I suppose. But if anybody's got any suggestions uh, as to what, any slogans that I say regularly in the videos that you've become accustomed to, um, anything like that or any cheesy pictures that you've seen uh, on the channel, then I'd be more than happy to make a t-shirt, just like I did when um, somebody reached out and did this fan that's a fan art, actually. Uh, they commissioned somebody to actually do that picture of me sitting in the cheesy chair of wisdom, which I started off doing in um, uh, the early days on Ask the Cheese Man. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if anybody's got any ideas around uh, new merch, different different designs and stuff. Kim was thinking of bringing some up. I have got a pretty funky um, cheese mouse drinking um, some red wine and a and uh and some cheese and he's eating some cheese which features in the first book key karma mate cheese so i'm thinking maybe i'll throw that onto a t-shirt as well because that's pretty cool that features in the book but um yeah if anybody's got no ideas then you just pop them into the chat and we'll go from there um nicola says uh i've got the goat one uh because i've got goats <laughs> very cool is that the talk curdy to me <laughs> uh, I love that one. That's a good design. Alrighty. Um, now, we do have some questions. So if you think during the show, if you've got any ideas, then uh, you pop them in. Uh, all right. First question is from Muchy Bun. Um, says, hi, Gavin. Can I add penicillium candidum to the English coulomer, um recipe for a French style? Yeah, look, they are very similar. The, um, the English, well, it's called English farmhouse cheese um and the word uh coulomer is um french for tower or something like that um so yeah you can add um penicillium candidum to get a fuzzy version of that and that will be uh just as nice so you shouldn't have any problems with that use the same recipe but at the start when you put the cultures in put some penicillium candidum as well now if you want to present prevent a little bit of skin slip which may occur because the cheese is very moist. Um, you may want to add a little bit of geotrichum candidum as well. Uh, so, uh, your choice, but you can get that a go. The, give that a go. I'll stop stammering now. Um, next question is uh, from Emily. And Emily says, G'day Gav, what, what using goes best? What using? What cheese? What cheese goes best? On a hot summer's day, do you think? Well, definitely um, nothing too strong uh, and nothing too fatty. So I find that if you're having a barbecue, then this is just me here in the hot summer in in Australia. Um, if you leave cheddar outside on, you know, like um, bits of cheese and stuff like that, and it's, you know, above 30 degrees, the cheese starts to sweat fat, basically out of its um, out of itself. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it doesn't. It, it, it tastes all right. It just doesn't look very appealing. So um, on a hot summer's day, probably better to serve up fresh cheeses. So like um, uh, Sherve or um, uh, what was one I was talking to Kim about today? Uh, Cacio Ricotta, which is very similar to Queso Fresco. It's almost identical recipe. Um, and uh, yeah, a nice fresh cheese like that that is chilled, bought out on a hot day. Um, served with crackers or some nice sourdough bread be perfect um, those fresh cheeses would be spot on so great question uh, Emily thank you for that um, H7 Apollo says for logo generation for merch you could try using an AI art generator artificial intelligence uh, you just type in what you want to see and it makes a visual rendering it's called mid journey I'll have a look at that Thank you so much for that suggestion. Uh, mid journey. See what it comes up with. Now, as long as those um, images are unique and 
uh, copyright free, then I will should be able to use them. So um, other than that, uh, if they're not, then it probably won't work. But Kim says she was going to draw something. I don't know what she's going to draw, but uh, that'll be interesting to see what comes out there. So that will be pretty cool. Okay, I think it's time for a joke because um, uh, we'll, we'll get to Jean. We'll get to your question in a second. Uh, time for a cheesy joke. This, this one was quite funny. Uh, it says, um, I walked up to the cheese counter in the shop last week. I interrupted him and he had to start counting all over again. Right. Who who comes up? With this? Oh, maybe I didn't say it right. Maybe maybe the the punchline was a bit. Oh, there you go. Very nice. Uh, what kind of cheese sounds like a royal duck? Quark. Get it. Get it. Right. That that's enough of that. That's enough jocularity. Right. We got a question from Jean. Uh, Jean says, hello Gavin, um, I've made a farmhouse cheddar blue maturation box at 9 degrees for a month. Uh, I have vac packed it now and it's very moist. I reseated it in the other day and there was liquid everywhere. Help. Okay. So with um, um, blue cheeses, and you'll notice in the video that I didn't uh, vacuum pack. Because uh, blue cheeses are usually a lot moister. I know the farmhouse cheddar blue was a bit dry, and mine was. Uh, but that's because I left it in the ripening box and I didn't, um, I didn't vacuum pack it uh, and I let it dry out a little bit more uh, in the ripening box. And, and I think I matured it fully in there. Now, I may have said in the video that if you want to vac pack it, then you can if it's drying out too much. But I found that when I kept a moist cloth underneath the, uh, the mat, uh, then it kept the humidity up and the rind didn't dry out. And I got some good mold growth on the top and the bottom, rarely on the sides, because the sides dry out faster. Um, and then, after, you know, I pierced it after about five days or something, as soon as I saw, first started seeing a, a blue flush on the top and bottom. Uh, then I pierced it and then let the oxygen into the cheese. Uh, now, for you to save it, then best of all, it would be, um, hopefully there's blue in the middle. Yeah, you'd have to use a cheese trier to uh, determine that, of course, without cutting the cheese open. Um, but what you could do is um, um, uh, is uh, put on a drying mat, let it air dry again, um, and if it starts growing blue again, that's fantastic. If not, then um, it's only been a month, so you'd be lucky to get any blue in there. Usually after about two, uh, the insides is growing. But like I said, you'll have to determine that with a cheese trier to have a look. But let it air dry, let it dry out a bit more, and then maybe just put it in a ripening box, uh, not vacuum pack it and uh, mature it uh, like that from here on in. And hopefully that'll work for you, Gene. Okay. Um, uh, right, okay, have fun. Uh, they're in unique and able to be used for commercial purposes. Oh, okay, so this is the AI mid journey stuff. I'll check that out. Uh, Chris says, I'm going to show what a 100% newbie I am here. I'm milking uh, jerseys and have raw milk. So far, cottage cheese has been a complete failure for me. Can you point me to one of your tutorials that can help? Unfortunately not, Chris, for cottage cheese, uh, because it's my nemesis. I cannot make the stuff. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Uh, there are quite a few raw milk cottage cheese recipes out there. But I just can't make the stuff. I don't know what I what I'm doing. I think I'd have to watch somebody actually make it, um, and and then it'd probably be okay for me. But currently, I just cannot make cottage cheese. All the other cheeses, no problems at all, bar a few hiccups here and there. But um, yeah, as for cottage cheese, unfortunately, I cannot make the stuff. Uh, but what you could do is make a fantastic cream cheese. There's a thought, but if you're into, you're just starting your journey, then, you know, get yourself a good kit, some great instructions and and, and try that. So I hope that helps. Um, Nicholas says, um, I've run out of Floridanica culture, I'm going to put an order 
uh, put in an order on the weekend. What else could I use to make your go uh, Bloomy Goat Blue, which is a favorite? Um, okay, so any of the... Um, any of the aromatic mesophilics, so MO36R, which we stock as well. You may have some of that nickel, or I can't remember if you ordered any or not. Uh, the Mad Millie um, White Culture Blend, if you've got any of that, that will work as well. Um, but you'll have to add some, you know, penicillin rope 40 to it as well. Um, to get the, the blue bit part of it, of the Bloomy Goat Blue. But that has an aromatic mesophilic culture as well as uh, penicillium candidum in the same sachet so that will work uh there you know floridanica is a type of uh, aromatic mesophilic as well and and that'll all work so that I hope that helps um chris says um ha now i don't feel so bad i was he hesitant to move on because i figured cottage cheese was an easy one um for some people it must be because um somebody makes cottage cheese out there uh but you know i i can't I'll admit defeat when I when I see it when I do it. Um, Shauna says um, I'm making a saffron manchego tomorrow. Do I ne uh, do I need to cook the saffron before I add it to the milk? Uh, it's just store bought. Um, I didn't. I didn't add. Uh, I didn't boil it or anything. Oh, let me just hang on. I'd have to go and check. Sorry. Um, how am I going to check? Right. I know how I'm going to check. I'm going to go to look at my YouTube video. <laughs> That's what it's there for, I suppose. Um, uh, okay, hang on. I'll show you what I'm doing because it would be ordinary if I didn't. All right. Um, I'm just on the page and uh, I'm going to go look for the saffron cheese. And I have the, what did I do? Ah, uh, there we go, yes. So this is what I did, Shauna. Um, if you have a look at the saffron cheese, I heated them up, toasted them for 20 seconds. And that not only brings the flavor out, it also brings, uh, it, it kills any bacteria and um, yeast and molds that may be on it. Now you get, it's fairly smoky stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's only for about 20 seconds, that's it. Don't do it any more than that. Um, you don't want to burn the saffron, so uh, there we go. Let me just uh, stop that. There we go. Isn't that good? The internet. Oh, there we go. I've bro <laughs> broken the fourth wall. Um, so there you go. Hopefully that works. Uh, so yeah, that, you don't need to you don't need to boil it or anything like that. So just you have to have to um, uh, heat it up. I didn't. There's no oil, nothing. Just heat it up because that releases some of the um, uh, aromatic oils and stuff as well. So there you go. Um, Dr. Ganjaman, hello mate, how are you? Uh, good day, Chief Curd Nerd. Uh, very cool. Um, uh, Nicholas says, bugger, uh, don't have that, so we'll have to wait and make a cheddar instead. You could make a, a variation on a cheddar uh, Nicola if you wanted to. Um, that, um, uh, who was it? Was it Chris? No, it wasn't Chris who was doing it. Gene, who was making Farmhouse Cheddar Blue. It's a great cheese. If you're making a cheddar, might as well try something different. Uh, if you haven't tried the um, uh, Farmhouse Cheddar Blue before, it's worth making. Uh, it really is. Mine turned out fantastic. The marbling on the inside was just legendary. So um, I really enjoyed that. So you can try that. Um, you know, why have cheddar when you can have blue cheddar? <laughs> why not? Um, Katarina, lovely to see you again. Um, hi, I made a Limburger almost two weeks ago. I wash it daily with a simple brine uh, and a bit of brevi bacteria liners in the mix, not expired, but I have no reddish tinge. Uh, is my Limburger doomed? Um, no, it's not. Now, you probably would have added uh, brevi bacteria linens into the milk as well. I hope you did, because I think that was in the recipe. Um, it, look, it, it's a very subtle change. The, 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 as you wash the cheese over time, and I think, I can't remember, it's about six weeks, I think, for Limburger. By the time you get to the end of the six weeks, you will find that it will have an orange color. So uh, it will start to get there. You'll see it'll go from white when, when it starts, 
uh, it'll start to go then a chalk color, uh, and then it'll start to go a cream color. Uh, and then finally, you'll get to a pinkish sort of tinge uh, as you keep washing it. And then if you're lucky um, and it hasn't gone all mushy inside, which those sorts of cheeses tend to go very soft, uh, it'll get to a orangey sort of um, reddish sort of tinge. So there you go. Uh, and you have said, you said that, yes, you did put a, a brevet bacterial linens in there. So it should be good to go. Like I said, it's a very subtle change day on day, uh, week on week even. So yeah, just be patient, keep doing it, uh, and you should be good to go. Now the uh, the Brevi Bacterial Linens Wash, you should really only do for the first, I think I only do it for about the first three days. Um, and then from there, it's just a simple brine solution, keep the surface moist. That's why it's called a smear cheese or washed rind cheese. Um, and I tend to, I don't use a cloth, I just use my hands. So I put a, just pour a bit of the um, the brine on the on the cheese and then just wash it all over with my hands, keep it nice and sloppy, um, and then pop it back in the ripening box. Those sorts of cheeses, that's how they're made. So there you go. Uh, don't be shy with it and, and give it give it your best shot. Uh, you should be fine. Um, Nicholas says, sounds great for the farmhouse cheddar blue. It should be very yummy. Give that a go. Uh, the chairman says, good morning, everybody. Or, good morning. Where are you? Uh, where, where are you located? Good morning. Should be evening or lunchtime. Uh, yeah, maybe on the uh, somewhere in the Americas, I would think. Very cool. Thank you so much. Um, uh, what what time is it? Twenty two past. Right. So, um, I have. I hope nobody's a vegan. I suppose if you're here, you, you probably are not. Oh, okay. The chairman says he's from Virginia, USA early start to the morning okay um here's a joke why did the vegans go to the wine and cheese event a, a big <laughs> this is stupid uh because they wanted to whine about cheese right there we go very cool um uh, one, one more <laughs> here's a joke what's this uh, cool Cat says, uh, you've heard of the Man of Steel. He is the Man of Cheese. Good morning, Gavin. Good morning, Cool Cat. From a great idea for a French superhero, Le Monsieur de Fromage. Good morning from the UK. Oh, 10.23. Have you changed clocks, you guys? Maybe not. Anyway, lovely to see you here. Um, H7 Apollo says, you've said that one before. You know, look, I've only got a hundred jokes. <laughs> I'm probably going to repeat myself. Includes a hundred cheesy jokes. I've probably done what? Ten streams? So I reckon I've gone around the clock. See if you've heard this one before. I know, all the regular watchers probably will have. Uh, don't ask me whether... Oh, uh, sorry. Oh, don't ask me. Um, uh, people, people ask whether I'll make cheese in my afterlife. I tell them, there's no way in hell. <laughs> Not that I'm going to hell, of course. I don't think so. Anyway, that's that's enough cheesy jokes for right now. Um, uh, cool, that's <laughs> a joke. Uh, why did the chicken cross the road to the seance? He wanted to get to the other side so he could get to the other side. Really? really? That's that's not that's not a cheese joke. Um, okay. Uh, alrighty. Um, Chris says, um, "What will cause my mozzarella to start to turn pink after a few days in the fridge?" Ooh, um, it will be a um, there's a pink uh, mold, which is not very healthy for you. And uh, it just means that it's too humid in the fridge, whatever you've got there. What kind of mozzarella is it, Chris? Um, is it mozzarella you've made yourself? And which method did you use? If you used the quick mozzarella method, then those cheeses tend to go off very quickly. Uh, very quickly indeed. Um, but normal mozzarella in brine shouldn't have any problems uh, whatsoever. So... Um, 
so let me know let me know uh cool cat says um i'm sorry i was gonna make cheese puns but thought but they thought but they then i thought no way yeah nice um uh yeah so um uh chris yeah let me know about the mozzarella which version you've made or bought or what have you okay it's time for the gallery um curtain nerds uh but before we do stand by i'm going to throw in some memberships will it let me will it let me um just thinking about it Ooh, here we go drum roll have we got a drum roll no i haven't got a drum roll i need a new sound um here we go so in the chat in a second stand by there are some gift memberships being thrown your way um if you pick one up well done um but uh we'll get there in a second mochi bun finally got one mr sword still haven't heard from you before chris turner vincent moss and cheryl benson lovely to see you all uh and your little star will come up uh over there in a second Thank you so much for picking up those memberships. Congratulations. Gotta be quick, I tell you. That's for sure. Um, alrighty. Um, what was I doing? Oh, sorry, gallery. So let's go to the gallery. Um, uh, before we do, Chris has the answer for me. He says, raw milk, calf rennet, quick 30-minute type. Yeah, you got to eat it within two days. It, you shouldn't have it in the fridge long enough to go pink because it tends to... Uh, flatten and go all mushy and sticky and stuff quick mozzarella is not made for that it's made to eat the same day so um, that's what you'll have to do uh, unless you make the traditional mozzarella style uh, with cow's milk which is a bit firmer than the buffalo milk version uh, Chris so uh, yeah give that a try okay um, so uh, to the gallery ladies and gentlemen course michael has sent me in some photos which is great of him because they're the only ones i got okay so uh where's the spiel here we go uh michael says uh hi gavin yesterday i made a stout cheddar following your video and instructions uh final pressing was for 15 hours and drying for only nine hours and it has started to crack uh the house is sitting at 21 degrees celsius is it time to vacuum seal uh, regards Michael uh, let's have a look Michael and I have already answered Michael offline uh, and he's got a nice little setup there very similar to mine uh, near the sink he's got a lot of big plastic tub idea that is a great idea uh, okay so there's the stout cheddar cubes of cheddar sitting in the stout the uh, cubes of cheddar sitting in the stout um, my question to you, Michael, is something I didn't ask, was um, uh, were you keeping the stout warm? Was the stout at room temperature when you added it to the, uh, to the curds? Did the curds cool down very much uh, during the soaking period? Because if you kept them warm, they usually knit together a lot better. Anyway, so that, that's, that, that doesn't look too bad at all. And then really i've seen worse honestly uh what it probably needed was a bit um a bit more pressure uh because you'll see that uh, oh yeah you can see me pointer you'll see that the, these are the cubes that are, are put together really need a compact rind um and i pressed it uh i think i pressed it longer so and you can do that it's no big deal as long if you've got to the 15 hours and you pull it out and you go oh the rind's not really melded together enough what you can do is um of course uh, do another 15 hours it's not going to hurt the cheese any anything at all 21 degrees is perfect um and keep it at that 50 pounds of pressure or 22 kilos uh for the entire time and you'll find that the rind may knit together a bit better as well so that that will help but current situation is um you, it's dried now and you can see that the cracks are starting to form uh, around where the curds have joined together uh, and that's okay that's not a bad thing uh, and what I advised Michael to do uh, was to vacuum pack it now 
I wouldn't dry it any longer because it's dry. That's why it's cracking. Um, so, yeah, so a vacuum pack. He's vacuum packed it now. Uh, and it should be go for, good to go for maturation. So there shouldn't be any problems. Um, now, there is one more photo. Um, uh, one more photo. And this is, there we go. That is the cheese that I'm going to be releasing the video of um, this week. Uh, so this is um, uh, this is my smoky paprika kefili, and doesn't the rind look amazing uh, for that one? Uh, and the, uh, let me tell you that they're mechanical holes. That's that's what kefili does because it's very crumbly but very moist cheese. So it's very hard to explain if you've never eaten kefili, uh, and you'll see in the video when I cut it. It's very it's soft as well. Um, it's one of those unique cheeses um, and it only matures for three weeks. So it's an amazing cheese. Um, I love kefili and uh, both Kim and I love it. And the uh, funny thing is I offered some to Ben, my 23-year-old son, who lives here still. And uh, he turned it down. He said <laughs> he turned his nose up. At it. I don't know why. Why would he do that when I make some pretty good cheeses? Anyway, so... Tonight he was getting desperate for a snack after dinner and uh, he said to me, uh, or he said to Kim, can I have some of this cheese? And Kim says, fill your boots. So um, yeah, so he had some and he came in and told me that it was one of the most excellent cheeses he's ever tasted. So there's a, a little hint of uh, smoky paprika, which is absolutely amazing. Um, but the kefili flavor just stands out and it, it just melts in your mouth coats your whole mouth but anyway you'll see that in the video what i've done and i think that's all oh, is that it that's it there's no more pictures so what i've done in the um the video is i've um combined the making video and the taste test video because it was like only three weeks and i couldn't wait any longer so i thought and, and i wasn't feeling well as you know and now i'm actually feeling much better for anybody who's wondering um uh so uh, yeah, the good thing is that um, I managed to get this all done and it was like I made it when I was like half sick and I should really have done it. But I made it, done it, tasted it, perfect. So video, I spent all day today putting the video together, uh, usual style, um, nothing fancy, but it, it, it'll be a good looking cheese. So. Anyway, um, that's all for the gallery. Thank you so much for sending that in, uh, Michael, sending your pictures in. Um, let me just um, uh, show people how to send stuff into the, uh, where is it, that's, I'll start <laughs> right here we go, All right. so you go to the channel page, uh, you go to the about tab, and if you're logged in, you go down to here and say, uh, where it says for business inquiries, view email address, now, because I'm, I'm logged in as me, it would be a silly thing to do to show everybody their email address online. I'll get more spam than you can poke a stick at. So I'm not going to. Um, I'll let you go there. Now, you can only do this on browsers. Uh, on tablets, you can do it as well. But you, I don't think it works on the app versions of YouTube on iOS and Android. So um, it was... Um, uh, it's, so, so that's how you do it. So send the photos in there. Thank you, everybody. Uh, who have sent in photos in the past. Um, I love seeing your cheese pictures. And I'll, even um, if you're having some cheese disasters, then quite happy to show them if you're you're willing um, and uh, and help everybody as a lesson. Um, that's that's one of the best ways to for people to learn is to see other people's mistakes, not make their own mistakes. So, but you know making mistakes is a great way to learn as well but just don't do it every time anyway um uh h7 apollo says don't let your memberships expire now indeed uh if you want to see early access and get all these cool icons and stuff uh for your in the chat then uh oh, i can recognize you by the the green text that you're a an official member that's all very cool uh, and there are other perks if you upgrade to higher tiers. There's exclusive uh, members-only videos and stuff like that. I haven't got anybody at those membership tiers yet, but yeah, we'll, we'll get there. 
Um, anyway, uh, Cool Cat says, I've already got, I've got to go into town already, but I'm, so I'm out. Oh, sorry. Um, I have a job on, what? I have a job on my to-do list, buy moulds for Petite Blue. I discovered yesterday I can't get them delivered to the UK from your store. Gavin, any alternatives? Uh, yeah, look, any camembert hoop will do. That's exactly what I used. Um, 10 centimeters across, or uh, what is that? Four inches, four and a half inches. Um, that's the uh, diameter of the mold. So across the top and the bottom, they should be a, like a tube. Uh, if they're hollow, if they've a hoop and they've got no bottom, then that's fine. You can use that. Just use um, uh, just use bamboo mats as the you know, top and bottom. You can do the flippy thing. Um, so that's very cool. So that, that's an alternative. Um, you, look, you should be able to find. You, you're near Europe, for goodness' sake. You should be able to find um, uh, heaps. Of, there's heaps of cheese making stores online swags of them there's some good ones in uk uh as well you just gotta have a quick search for them and you'll find all the goodies um michael says uh yes gavin i kept the sous vide uh was running at 38 degrees perfect so yeah just maybe just a bit longer in the press michael would help um i, I have done that before and i've had no issues with the cheese it did form a proper rind um and in fact it was probably a i think just trying to think I think it was a cheddar that did it so i just pressed it longer uh you know the the press spring you can only press it so hard without cracking the top plate the the follower um so yeah you just press it longer and it should be good to go okay nicola says um it is always great when you get praise my four-year-old grandma granddaughter loves my bloomy goat uh, especially the rind because it has black on it lol <laughs> indeed um you know when people like ben when he praised me tonight normally he's not he's not a big cheese eater but i'll tell you what there's a half a, half of that kefili left because in the four days since we've shot it i've had a little piece for supper every night and it's just delicious um I'm going to have to um, up my walking regime from 30 minutes a day to a little bit longer, I think, to uh, to get some of that cheese off. Um, but uh, yeah, you're right, Nicola. I love it when people say that your cheese is, is good. Well, you know, it should be anyway. You, you, you don't eat bad cheese. You, we don't we don't attempt. We don't go out of our way to make bad cheese, if you know what I mean. So well done. Well done. A four year old. Uh, would certainly tell you if they didn't like the cheese. That's know that for sure. Um, uh, the chairman says, um, "Have a good evening, afternoon, evening, everybody, and to you as well." Uh, cool Cat says, um, "France is 300 miles away. I'll get them." Um, I should have said, "Do you have affiliate links so I can contribute to the channel?" And it's super duper content. I was putting shoes on and texting. Ah, right. Um, yeah, uh, there should be an affiliate link down in the description of the video. Um, I'm not sure if it's available now, but there's an Amazon store. And it should, if you go to the... Uh, there's a little store there I made on Amazon with a whole bunch of products. And I'm pretty sure there's some camembert molds there as well. If you click through to that, it should go to the UK Amazon. And the affiliate should come across as well, I think. Uh, give it a try anyway um emily says when will when will we be seeing more of your cute dogs um funny funny you should say that emily uh, they are featured heavily in the next video the uh, the smoky paprika um kefili that i made as i was ed editing it this morning every time i was at the sink there was a dog near my feet either um, I can't remember that. My, <laughs> I'm getting tired. I can't remember my dog's names. It's Hamish and Bonnie. Hamish and Bonnie were at my feet the whole time. So if you look closely enough in, you know, as you watch through the video in the next couple of days when it comes out, you will see those two West Highland Terriers. They're terrors, all right. Those two, 
Those two doggos feature heavily in the video. And you can see the, their cuteness. Um, but funny you should say that, today I released a short um, video uh, and uh, YouTube had this new feature where you can get any of your old videos and take 60 seconds of it and turn it into a short. So, um, so I did that because I was having a moment with the dogs. We were sitting outside. It was a beautiful sunny day here in, um, in Melton. And uh, I looked over to the pool area where I filmed the Edom taste test all those years ago, so many years ago now. Uh, and I remember at the end of the video, there was a little segment of uh, Teddy, our old West Highland Terrier, and Holly, our, um, our Bitsa, who was a um, Silky Terrier cross. Beautiful little dogs. Um, and they had a little bit of a, a taste testy session. And I, had a, I was <laughs> having a bit of a cry, a bit of a tear in my eye, um, because you always miss the dogs. So don't, I'm doing it now. <laughs> but yes, we will. <laughs> you get to see lots more of... Um, Hamish and Bonnie, uh, very soon. Uh, cool Cat says, when I get back, I'll go to your Am store on Amazon. Thank you, Gavin. Bye bye now. Cool Cat has left the building. Indeed. Um, thank you so much for supporting us via the affiliate link, mate. Uh, appreciate it. Um, the time is uh, 17 minutes to go. I'm sure I've got one or two jokes left because I can do that. Uh, I don't know if anybody's heard this one, but why is Christmas the cheesiest holiday? Because of baby cheeses. Get it? Oh, that's crazy. All right, another joke. Uh, I bought a purple cheese grater today. I didn't even know you could get purple cheese. <laughs> oh, I had to think about that one for a second. Oh, there you go. There it is. Oh, these people I bought the cards from don't mind me showing them on the internets. Anyway, <laughs> that was that one. That, oh. Oh, all right. Can I, can I do one more? Let me know. Yes, I'll do one more. Uh, it says, uh, why were the mozzarella and feta holding hands... Uh, because they looked Gouda together. It's really howler. Let, let's get the words right. Anyway, there you go. Nice joke. That'll do. No more jokes. Any more questions, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, it would be lovely to answer some uh, from you. Because other than that, I've got a video I want to get up tonight. Um... And if nobody else has got any questions, and I've run out of jokes, uh, then um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll cut the show short. So I know it's only 15 minutes, but uh, yeah, it's not. Uh, if there's no questions, there's kind of no show, I suppose. Um, okay. Uh, Boaz B says, "I'd love to know how your wife is doing." A great question. Um, I said the other day that she was doing okay, and this was on um, on Sunday. Uh, guess what? We discovered, uh, nothing to do with cancer, That's it's all good uh, in, the, in that respect. We found out that she had tonsillitis. So all day Saturday she was sleeping uh, and we couldn't figure out why she was so whacked. And, you know, you do think of the, the C word. Um, and she, because she's gone through the experience, I haven't gone through the, well, I have gone through the experience with her, but I didn't go through it personally. But... Um, uh, yes, yeah, so she was worried about that, of course. But um, she said she was getting a sore throat. I checked her glands and her glands were up uh, just, you know, down here. And she had sore ear and one of her ears was well, kind of buzzing on and off, if that makes sense. So I looked in her throat with my iPhone, a little torchy thing, good doctor's torch, that one. And she um, had tonsillitis. She's got white things on both her tonsils. So she's on some antibiotics now. And uh, I'm getting better, I hope. Uh, she's, she's a bit more mobile and a bit less tired. She actually made some peanut butter slices today, so that's really good. Other than that, Boaz, she's doing fine. Uh, tonsillitis, you know, knocks anybody down, I suppose. Not me, because I've had my tonsils removed. I was one of those kids back in the 60s where the first thing they did, the first infection of tonsillitis, they whip your tonsils out. Um, but, yeah, there you go. Uh, that's the current state of affairs there. 
All right, um, Curd Nerds, I think uh, we will call it a night. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If there's no more questions... Um, oh, there is a question from Good Ideas. First time ever, I think. It says, oh, there's more questions. Oh, everybody's going crazy. Um, it says, hi, get, hi there, Gavin. Coles charges a lot for Gorgonzola, and a small slice costs more than $6. So I want to know that if I mix... That slice of gorgonzola with a block of Philadelphia. Yes. Is, is there any more? Um, yeah, let me know. Um, Boaz says, uh, awesome, happy to hear this. I can't usually be at the live stream, so missed a lot of updates, I guess. Um, yeah, sorry, so I should, about the, the big C. Uh, she got the all clear um, in the last scan. Um, so that's good. Uh, it's been two years now since she finished treatment. Yeah, two two years, 2021. Yeah, nearly two years um, since she finished treatment. And uh, yeah, so so far so good. Uh, we go and see the oncologist um, every six months. You know, uh, gets a scan, uh, a mammogram, and an ultrasound, and everything gets checked out. She's in very good hands. So, um, one last question. This is the last one. Uh, Azeroth the third says hello I'm new to your channel lovely to meet you and uh, good on you um, <laughs> and I just wanted to ask if you have a pairing recommendations for cheese and wine well I do have a book uh, it's not my book but this is one that I often refer to uh, it's called tasting wine and cheese the insider's guide to mastering the principles of pairing uh, it's written by what's his name Adam Centimore. It's very good. However, um, what it does do, though, it actually names specific cheeses. For instance, if we look at uh, Pinot Grigio, which is a nice wine. Uh, it's a white wine. And it says, uh, the cheese that loves it most, because wine is so simple and refreshing, keep the cheese pairings equally as basic. To complement the bright citrus notes, a fresh goat's cheese is superb. Uh, and then he goes on to name about six different types of goat's cheeses for all sorts of countries. Um, so, yeah, so it's a pretty good book. Um, so, uh, Tasting Wine and Cheese. So I highly recommend this one. Um, if you use my Amazon store and you can't find it on there, uh, then because you've clicked through that link anyway, anything you buy after that within 30 days or something, uh, I may get a small commission off. So if you can find that book on Amazon, yeah, perfect. Great book. Anyway, um, I'll say goodnight now. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, curd nerds, one and all. And uh, we will see you... Oh, before we go, clear that. Um, we'll be, be, before we do that... Um, uh, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, don't forget that if you want to learn to make cheese, then you can pop over to the Curd Nerd Academy. Go to courses.littlegreenworkshops.com.au. And there's a beginner's course there where you can learn to make nine cheeses, plus all sorts of information about how to achieve it. Uh, it's a structured course. So if, uh, you know, if you come across my YouTube channel and, you know, the you don't really know what you're getting yourself into because there's so many videos. I've made over 160 different cheeses now. It'd be hard to select some if you're a beginner, right? So if you want a structured learning uh, proposition, then you could do no worse than go to the... Uh, beginner's cheese course at the Curtin Nerd Academy. If you're going to buy any supplies, you can pop over to uh, littlegreenworkshops.com.au, which is the store that Kim and I run, and you can get all these, you know, kits and all of the um, uh, cultures and supplies and equipment for cheese making over there. We ship to a lot of countries throughout the world. Um, and last but not least, and I'm glad I fixed the link to it. You can go to merch.cheeseman.tv and uh, pick up any merchandise, including my two books, Keep Karma Make Cheese and Keep Karma Make More Cheese. Uh, yeah, they're available for sale there as a PDF. Anyway, that's it for this week. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Curd Nerds. Uh, and um, we will see you on Sunday morning uh, at 8 a.m. Eastern, uh, uh, yeah, Australian Eastern Standard Time, uh, Standard Daylight Time. Uh, so it's plus 11 is my time zone. So, uh, yeah, if you just go to the YouTube live page, you'll see when it's scheduled for next time. Anyway, thanks for watching, Curtinans, and I'll see you next time.